What's up, lore masters? Today we'll be taking a look at the Vorcha and Negvar class vessels. Something interesting to note, while it isn't in canon, behind the scenes it has been stated that these two ships are reminiscent of Federation design, this due to Starfleet engineers assisting in their creation. This is why the Vorcha and Negvar are as similar to Starfleet ships as they are to older designs. Additionally, I know I've done these classes before, but unfortunately I couldn't find them, and I bet that it's in some innocuous battle breakdown before I started a series dedicated to ships. So this video will be a clear breakdown of such vessels. With that out of the way, let's just get into it. Unfortunately, not a ton is known on the Vorcha class vessel. There are, however, a few things we can infer from the different series that the ship appears in. This ship was most likely the answer to increasing innovations by Starfleet, the Romulans, and other powers within the Alpha and Beta quadrants. The ship was also apparently some form of status symbol as originally only the Klingon Chancellor and wealthy houses could field the vessel. The vessel would even serve as the flagship of the Klingon Defense Force until the launching of the Negvar. Observed in the late 24th century, the ship was, as stated, only seen sparingly at first but became the mainline vessel for the Klingon Defense Force. This relegated the Bird of Prey and most all of its iterations to almost a fighter-like status regardless of which one you're looking at. Designated as an attack cruiser, the Vorcher was utilized extensively during the Klingon Cardassian, Klingon Federation, and Dominion Wars. The design of the ship, while updated, is still similar to vessels in Klingon ancestry. Because why the hell wouldn't you continue to keep structural weaknesses? I mean, that's just logical. The bridge was separate from the main body via a neck that melded into the quote-unquote wings. The nacelles are on either side slanted, more in line with the Intrepid and Akira design versus what we see on other Klingon vessels. A triangular superstructure sits atop the dorsal side. Impulse engines would be located on the back directly below this superstructure. Additionally, some, if not most of the ship is created out of a duranium alloy. The Vorcha class sports a forward mount disruptor cannon that fires solid and intermittent disruptor beams as well as torpedoes. Additionally, the vessel has nacelle mounted disruptor emitters cause now they make those, I guess. The bridge of the ship is similar to other Klingon and Federation designs as noted, with the main view screen located on the forward bulkhead. The command chair is located in the middle, forward of several different stations, and has the ability to pivot 360 degrees. The bridge itself also has control stations that line the walls in every direction. The ready room, a new addition to Klingon ships from what I can tell, is meant, in theory, to show the prestige of the captain with the trophies lining the walls. Engineering is located on deck 26 near the reactor, with the armory located on the upper half of the ship. The computer core, a small unmanned room, has a central area circular console with the walls being lined with computers and monitors similar to the bridge. The ability to access the defense system database, computer core diagnostic, and navigational control systems is located here. The Vorcha also has VIP quarters, cause why the hell wouldn't it? It's only a ship based on a Spartan culture that dedicated all its resources to war. Or at least they pretended to. Again, the VIP quarters is a cabin with walls emblazoned with weapons and decorative banners of the Empire. It has chairs, couches, and resting areas, so basically for lush Klingons. Like the Vorcha class, the Negvar warship is seen in the late 24th century. An absolute powerhouse, this vessel became the flagship of the Klingon Defense Force. The ship is observed only two years before the Dominion War and is utilized to breach the shields of Deep Space Nine during the first battle of, wait for it, Deep Space Nine. While we never see the exact stats, given how powerful the Negvar is in battles, such as the first battle of DS9 as noted, as well as against Dominion ships, it's likely that a Negvar is on par or only slightly below that of the power of a Sovereign class starship. According to Memory Alpha, the bridge module is separate from the main body by a neck that flares out aft of the ship into forward swept wings which are reinforced by raised supports that also contain the ship's warp nacelles. I did read that line for line, I still have no idea what it means. The wings additionally have the impulse engines, and below the primary hull are two weapon pods with a triangular superstructure located on the dorsal section of the ship. Because it's of Klingon design, the ship additionally would have spikes to give it a more menacing feel. While we don't have exact breakdowns of the vessel, as I've stated, we know it has powerful disruptors as well as photon torpedoes. Both the Negvar and the Vorcha would be outfitted with cloaking devices, making them extremely powerful, and each would have the ability to travel at high warp, with at least the Vorcha exceeding warp 9.5. What I enjoy about both of these vessels is that they do indeed add something to the mythos of the Klingon Empire. They bring the Empire into the current age with their designs, and while not completely on par with Federation technology, would at least be able to stand up to most designs that Starfleet could field. But those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. As always guys, remember, you'll never know when you're ready to do something, so take the leap. 
Go ahead and do it because that's all it will ever be. A leap of faith.